for race two. Cars leaving on the warm-up lap now. James Moffat's alongside me in this track, James. 2.4 kilometres. Tyre wear is the big key. It certainly is, Aaron. Only one left-hander on this circuit, turn four there. But uh, some great passing opportunities, mainly into turn six and turn seven, which is actually the heaviest braking area in Australia. And with these big, heavy V8 newts, they will be feeling it. There's Kim Jane. Remember, he starts from 20th. It's a reverse top 20. So Paul Williams, former series rookie of the year, coming back this weekend. He starts on the front row with Alan Letcher. Glenn McNally coming back, another former rookie of the year in the Ute series, one of three brothers, as we've covered, and of course, with this mixture of race two, we tend to see the fast guys having to fight their way through the field. That's when there's the odd bit of drama. There certainly is, Aaron, and we saw a little bit of drama with uh, some of the quick guys in the first race, namely David Cedars in the sand trap and Grant Johnson with a puncture. So th both those guys will be coming from the back of the field also. And we'll be keeping an eye on their development. Daniel Kennedy there, he's driving again, the Jack Ellsgood car. He got a 23-second penalty from race one, so that pushed him out of taking advantage of the inversion and getting forward on the grid. Ben Dunn, remember, he's back there as well in that new FG. So left of screen is Paul Williams. Right of screen is Alan Letcher. Just another couple of Western Australians for something different and interesting. Have a look at the start from Travis Sharp. He's already belting in at people. Ryan Hansford sends Jake McNally out through the scenery. So the local blokes are in drama already. And we didn't have to wait long for the action to start. So already had a car on the grass on the run up to turn one. On board now with Andrew Fisher in his Jesus Falcon. And it's Letcher, though, who takes the lead across the top of the S's. On this hectic first lap, Andrew Fisher nearly loses the rear of the Jesus Ford. He's in the back of Reese McNally. I think he got the new on sign there. He did back on board now with Fisher. So first lap is always a great opportunity to make as many positions as you can. On board now with Kim Jane. Great camera angle this in front of the right front wheel on the Bob Jane Team Arts Commodore. Round the outside for Kimbo. So he's made uh, a couple of positions there, but always not the always risky to be out there outside Ooh. of turn six as we see Kimbo sideways on the exit and look at it looks like McConville and Fisher. Oh, do Fisher's it. gone. Gee, wheeze, he's off into the grass. Now that looked like him squeezing McConville. And Cam was not going to lift, and he got dispatched. We'll have to have a, another closer look at that, but certainly looked at it like that on first impression. And um, unusual to see Cameron in an incident. Obviously, oh. the uh, experience looks like Bizantic now up the inside or trying to give Sharp a bit of a tap in that United Oil entry. And, and now off through the this, Yeah, I think Sharp's got another drama too because he looked like he was losing fluid from the front of that car. Jake McNally is bogged. He's not going anywhere. 15th in race one. He'll be a DNF in race two. Back with the Auto 1 wildcard, chasing down Nathan Pretty. This is Adam Marjoram, who's on debut. He's a Perth Uni student. I don't know that they have Ute Racing 101 at Uni, but he's getting it. Safety car is out, but these boys are still into it. There's the yellow lights. Uh, boys, you need to stop. Uh, yeah, uh, you certainly do. So um, Marjoram will have to give away a few, a few of those spots back. Uh, Right. That's the on-board with Fisher. We've probably picked up a bit late on the Auto 1 replay on the NZ in car to really see how that all developed. This is a bit better. McConville's down the inside. There's a touchback there, and it stays. Cam just keeps it nailed. Which, you know, he had overlap there, so in that instance, Andrew probably was a bit cheeky trying to move across on him. This, him. Ah, this is a better angle. Yep. So Cam tries to find some room. Fisher's moving across. They're connected. And actually, He's yeah. still connected. They're still connected. Now they're not. See ya. That's a, a really strange incident, to be honest. And there's McNally just firing it straight off in the sand. Auto one replay. The boom. Gone. Buried. Spinning the rear wheels. And he's going nowhere in the JSW Commodore. So under safety car, Alan Letcher is the leader. Ryan Hansford in second spot. Paul Williams is third. Jared McLeod fourth in the McMahon Mining Commodore on home soil in front of the home sponsor, but Andrew Fisher has brought it back to the lane. Safety car at break. More in a sec. Safety car is pulling in this time around, so we'll get a restart in race two, round three of the Auto 1 V8 Ute Series, protected by Armour All and James Moffat. Thank goodness Armour All are protecting this thing because they need to be protected from one another. They certainly do, and we've said it time and time again, but safety cars usually produce safety cars, so let's hope we can get through this first couple of laps. Walton 
up the inside of Sharp, who does look like he's carrying a bit of damage. That car certainly has got some damage to the bonnet. Jesse Dixon in the uh, reigning champions car, the, the ice brake Commodore slips through as well. So on board now with Craig Donders, Thirsty Camel Commodore working here on Ben Cabbage in the Workhorse Falcon. And Cabbage has reported a, a real lack of grip in the earlier sessions. He tested Jack Elsgood's car, but his team also run in the lead up at Wakefield Park. And now that's Walton getting a move on Danny Bazadzik. So he's starting to chip his way forward. Jared McLeod out really wide then, managed to hang on to it and running a new engine this weekend. He reckons he's got as many horsepower additional as his number. He reckons he's got 50 more ponies and it's clearly working. Right, yeah, this is the furthest we've seen Jared up all year. So he's having a good run so far. Now, Chris Walton, we've seen him move forward at every reverse grid race this year, so it's becoming a bit of a trend for him, and that is why he is up the front of the championship. He's been quick every weekend, and he's managed to stay out of trouble so far, so hopefully his good run can continue. Now, Ryan Hansford, who is sitting second at the moment, he's had a tough weekend. He qualified 17th. He finished 16th in race one. Not the normal results that we'd expect on the stat sheet from the Queenslander, but... I just love race two because it mixes it up. It really gives you one of those races where you just don't know what's going to happen. But you tend to get rewarded for charging in these races. You can't sit and wait Peter Burnett off the road. Well, any time you have the quick guys coming from the back of the field, like we see Chris Walton again putting another move into turn six, this time on Jared McLeod, it always produces good racing. And, of course, the Ute guys, they are not afraid to get in amongst it and rub panels. So that's what the fans like to see. That's what we like to see. And... Um, Really, Walton, he's on a charge. He's going to get another position here into Turn 7. Down the inside on Paul Williams, who we had in the championship a few years ago. He's driving for the big gun team here this weekend. And Walton, oh, hang on a minute. Donders and Jane getting together. But quick update on Walton. He's been pinged 10 points for passing under yellow flags in race one. So that just knocks a couple of points out of his championship tally. But who went knocking it out of one another? This is getting a little bit willy. Williams and McLeod side by side, Dixon behind, then McNally, Byzantic, Gary Baxter, they're all lined up here. And remember that the, the inversion for this race, it's drawn from a hat, so number 20 was the number that came out, so therefore the top 20 cars from race one were inverted. We're looking back from Donison McConville, and now this is Glenn McNally getting a move on Ryan Hansford, and Glenn was a regular in the series a few years ago. He was the Rookie of the Year back in 2008, and he's driving as the third Cedars run car this weekend. We saw this car run by Josh Burton, the young Formula 3 driver from Tasmania, last time at Simmons Plains. But Walton is proving to be the form man in these second race reverse grid races. It's actually really great to see the three Mc McNally brothers all racing in the same race. We saw in the oh. opener, oh, a bit of contact here. But uh, we saw in the opener, it's the first time that the, the brothers have actually had the opportunity to all race against each other. And Glenn, on his return to the series, is doing a great job up in second so far. But on board, the Auto One guest car, young 18-year-old Marjoram, doing and a good job. And the guy in front, though, he should follow this guy, Grant Johnson, two-time new champ. Two-time Barbagallo round winner. Look at this, Jane and Donis arguing. Oh, oh Nathan, Nathan Pretty. Pretty. Championship leader, very nearly got wiped out. But he had, he, what's Craig Donis doing with those red wheels? Oh, I tell you what, he's taking out our camera. <laughs> That's what he's doing. So he's given the uh, the camera on Kim James unit a bit of a tune-up. They're almost three wide going into the bowl. I wouldn't want to be a part of this, that's for sure. Red wheels are a bit of a fashion statement, but clearly the car is still fast. But McConville's down the inside on Kim Jane. There's Ryle Harris in the Rexall Ford getting a move on Gary Baxter. Now, Harris is driving the FG model Falcon, debuted in round two in Tasmania, and clearly it was fast from the moment that it hit the track. This is Willie. McConville, he's been in the thick of the action this race, giving... Don does a bit of a hurry along. Kim Jane, he's still hanging in there around the outside. He's out of position. Jesse Dixon's got it all locked oh, up in the turn one. It. I reckon he might be in the bunker here because he went in really deep. No, he did make it. Oh, hang oh, on. Marjorie got one in the bunker. Oh, you're done. He won't be getting out of that. So that will be another safety car, which will just bunch the field up again. And uh, I don't think we can handle another safety car the way the racing's been so far. It's been fantastic. Now, that's the wildcard car. We should point out that it has a different guest driver 
at every round of the championship. Walton, he loves turn six. Now he's trying to get Glenn McNally. He gets him in the panel, but he'll, he'll get the run off the turn. He'll pick up second spot. And all he's got to do now is grab Alan Lecher. He's got five laps to do it in. And we haven't seen the safety car brought out, so maybe the officials are happy enough that that Auto One guest car is out of harm's way. I'm sure there'll be a stationary yellow, so that'll take the passing opportunity at turn one out. But interesting that I would have thought that we would have seen a safety car after that instant. Have incident. a look at how tight this is, James. You've got Dontis, Cabbage, McConville, Pretty, Jane, Johnson. They are no Oh, that was over the curb. You don't want to do that too much. But it is on. The great new pit facility to the right. The Utes are still using the old pit lane to the left to come in and out from the paddock area behind there. Oh, Jerry McLeod goes around now. They need to go left and right. They don't want to touch this car. Oh, oh. There, Johnson only just missed him. So that could have been a major... Oh, we've still got dramas going on. Bizantic's off. McConville's in there. Kip Jade's off the road. This is wild. In fact, this will be the last lap. The race has been called. A time certain finish, and Walton's going to get it done. Turn six. He's gone through, and Alan Ledger gives him a bit of a tap on the way through. Perfect timing with a straight to go. So he has been a man on a charge in this race. He's come from 16th on the grid. He has done a fantastic job, and Ledger coming under fire from McNally into the last corner. He won't be able to get that job done, but Chris Walton... Take a bow. He what a drive. Had a magnificent race. Ryan Hansford, his teammate, in oh. fourth. But it is still not over here in the last corner. Johnson up the inside of Kim John, uh, Dontis. And Kim James finally going to get past Craig Dontis. I've got a flat spot on my tongue. That was the craziest finish you've seen. There's about nine of them go across the line within a second or two of one another. Hard to keep up. But Chris Walton, fastest lap of the race, 16th on the grid. And he picked his way through them all in 10 laps to take the win. Alan Letcher, that was a strong drive from the front row of the grid. This is how Adam Marjoram ended up in the sand. Auto one replay, auto one car. Uh-oh. In too deep. Not coming back from there. Man, you're never going to get out of there, um, unfortunately. So oh, this yeah. was this is seriously how we got away with nobody running into Jared McLeod. I will never know. Look, Grant Johnson here with the lights on. Just Ooh. misses the back of that Commodore. There's McConville into the back of Ben Cabbage. This is all going on where there's McLeod spun to the middle of the road. Kim plows through the ground. Look at Donis. <laughs> Left run launch off the deck. This very nearly could have been really bad. This is nuts. <laughs> it's like a video game. It is. And I'm playing it. Kim Jane turned his uh, Commodore into a bit of an off-road vehicle there for a bit. So, But, uh, yeah, we can't say, really, Chris Walden's done a killer job in this race. Ah, nice nickname pun. I like it. He dominated the first round in Adelaide. He picked up two race wins there. He won at Tasmania, but he wins race two here. McConville, though, rounds out the top ten. Pretty in 11th. Kim Jane, the race one winner back in 15th. So it's great news for Chris Walton and the points for the title. Chris, what a drive from 16th. You just picked them off. Yeah, that was awesome fun, that race. Um, we got a pretty average start, actually, but we just went everywhere else where no one else went, and um, it worked out for us. What is it about your driving that enables you to just get by them like you do? I don't know. I just um, I love coming through the field. You know, you can use everyone as, as guides of how far you can go, and you just got to make sure you go a little bit harder than everyone else out there. 